So as part of my project to um, get the uh, robot arm working, I need to learn a bit more about closed loop DC motor control. Because what we have on that robot arm, brush DC motors together with a, um, a an encoder system that reports on the position of the motor. And then using the geometry of the equipment, you can come up with a position of your encoder arm. So um, the nice thing about the uh, inkjet printers that you find everywhere in dumpsters is that they have at least two DC brushed motors that are usually um, uh, have a feedback mechanism consisting of a uh, an encoder, an optical encoder that is reading um, uh, a patterned disk, which is consists of lines that um, are radial. And as the lines go past the optical encoder, it can it's got a pair of um, of sensors and it's reading the uh, the light and dark to produce in uh, a, a square wave, a pair of square waves actually that indicate they can be used to indicate um, both the direction and the velocity of your um, of your of your wheel. And from the direction and the velocity, you can come up with a position um, by counting those pulses. On the horizontal, there is a strip of tape usually that is um, that is also uh, a sequence of, of dark lines. And the encoder is on the back of this carriage here. And it is doing exactly the same thing, so that you can determine um, which direction, what velocity, and therefore, by counting pulses, you can control the position of your um, your print head axis. So you've got your um, paper feed axis, and you've got your print head axis, so you've got an XY axis. XY, you've got a Cartesian robot here, essentially. So, in order to understand a bit more about what um, DC motors, uh, DC brush motors, how they behave and how you need to drive them in order to um, uh, safely reverse engineer the, um, the Scarrow robot arm. Because that thing, that thing has a, well, it's got a five kilo payload. It's got arms that are made of uh, uh, cast aluminum. And if you've ever seen any videos of them, they can move pretty darn quick. So a mistake with one of those will either do damage to the robot or damage to surrounding people that it can reach. So I would rather make my mistakes using this than make my mistakes using a robot that can knock me unconscious. Call me a chicken. So, 12 volts seems to run these quite fine, at least this one. Um, I don't expect the other one to be any different either. It's just got a little more oomph to it, I believe. <clears throat> Do I want to quantify those oomphs? How many oomphs does it have? No. Oh. There we go. Whoa, swings it forward and backward quite nicely. As we saw with the, um, with the uh, Halloween prop that I made out of the glass printer that I tore apart. Well, not the glass printer I tore apart, but you know what I mean. So, um, 12 volt motors, probably. Mm -hmm. They usually are. And so now we need to figure out what the pinout is on the encoders. So on this one, I've removed all the unnecessary wires and there's just the four, I don't, can you see that in there? So yeah, so there's the, um, the four wires that are going to this um, optical encoder. And so I'm gonna try and figure out if I can get a pinout for that optical encoder. Um, 
but it's going to be tricky because I don't have the part number. And then the other thing I need to do is I need to um, try and figure out which wires on that, which wires on this ribbon cable here are relevant to the encoder on this. And rather than trying to read something that's trying to read these things. Uh-oh. There's another encoder part from a different different piece of equipment. Anyways, uh, yeah, so that's the next step, trying to figure out what the pinouts are for the two encoders. Okay, that's quite a bit to unpack. So um, let's just leave it so far as I was able to disassemble everything down to the board with the encoder and I can even get the part number off the encoder and when I put it back together again I'll do some video and what we're going to do is we're going to ring out that pin over to here the, these pins over to here so that we know which um, which pins um, are important for the encoder and hopefully there is no power conditioning on this board that is being used to um, to power the encoder um, and man I uh, I am really hoping not so anyways that's where we are okay See if we can figure this out Okay, it's a square pad. Okay, see if we can figure this out. So, I think we've got the pin out. Um, upper left hand corner, calling that pin one. Um, so, one, three, five, seven, nine. 11, 13, 15, 17, 19, and 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and 20. 14, 16, 18, 20, 11, 6, 2, and 1. So ground, 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 um, ground, and ground. So those are the ground wires. Now, I'm not sure why there's so many grounds, but... Um, there we are anyways. And pin one of this goes to pin three. Sorry. Pin one of our encoder goes to pin three. Pin two of our encoder goes to pin 13. Pin three of an, our encoder goes to pin four. And pin four is connected to all of the grounds. The question becomes, which is the power pin on this? And I'm wondering if Google will be our friend here. Well, yes, Google is our friend. And it looks like what we have is what I expected is a quadrature encoder. And somebody has determined that we've got um, a ground on pin one. And we've got phase on pins two and four. And plus five is pin three. So they've just labeled their pins um, backwards from mine, but the, uh, so yeah, uh, we can definitely go ahead and start using that thing for, um, looking at the quadrature signals coming from the encoder. But now the big question always is, will she go back together the way she came apart? Uh, yes. It's sometimes fun to play the game. Leave it for a week and then see if you can remember how to put it back together again. It's kind of like solving a puzzle. Yeah, but no. It's not that fun. Leave it for six months. Now we've got a game. was 
strain relief for keeping this guy stuck in there. Right, 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 right. Okay. And then that was from something else. One thing I will say about the HP DeskJet printer is they settled on one fastener size and they stuck with it throughout the whole thing. I have not had to use anything but this, what is this, a T6, T5, to undo any of the fasteners. So good on you, HP, for being consistent on fastener selection. It makes life much easier, much, much easier. I think that's right. Oh, you big dummy. Okay, so far so good. Uh, do we still have our 12 volts kicking here? Just to make sure we haven't mucked something up. Looks good. So, there's that piece. Um, I've got that there. I'm slip this guy in here. Wait. Very nice. Okay, so now we need to pop that back into, well, we don't need to pop it into its main chassis, but let's pop it into its main chassis so that we can um, have it suspended in air so that it can actually rotate freely. Now, this thing went something. Now, so there are two screws there and there that mount this on and then there's a uh, glass fiber uh, a glass fiber reinforced bracket that goes on to the end here and I have to say that the assembly of this thing they were thinking about how to make it easy to assemble it's brilliant Absolutely brilliant. Uh, goes to how you can have sub-assemblies like this that could be tested independently of everything else. And then you just have an you know, a simple assembly step later. DFM, baby, all the way. So there we go. That is that. So we have... To figure out what the pinout for this guy is, the difference is, I bet you, I bet you the pinouts are going to be the same anyways. So, um, it looks like there is a capacitor across pins one and three, going from the bottom up, or two and four. So those would be power and ground um, you, with a filter capacitor across the power rail. And that would mean pins two and four or um, pins one and three, depending on how you label them, will be the signal pins. So let's just, let's just hope. Can I figure out which one's ground by looking at that board? Why, well, yes I can. Given the excellent consistency, I am going to say that the square pin, uh, the square solder pad, is ground. And so that would leave the alternate pin, alternating pin, 
as being plus five. So I think we have our pinouts for our encoders and that just means we need to hook up our motors to some uh, DC motor drivers and then hook all of that up. It's using Arduino for ease and uh, do some playing with this thing. Anyways, um, I popped this off the, um, the motherboard for the printer and now we're going to solder some leads onto the relevant pins to make our wiring harness for remembering our pinout. We need to remember which side was which. Oh dear me. But luckily we can figure that out because some of these pins are connected together. So that's um, 2018. Okay, so that's pin 1, pin, th pin 1, pin 3, and I also need 13. Okay, let's uh, make sure that all of the grounds are the way we expect them. Yep. 1, 20, 18, 16, 14, 9, 11. Yeah, that's supposed to be a ground, but this is supposed to be on pin 13, not pin 11. That's why we do testing. Man, the number of times that I wish I would have taken the time to label wires. So, I am actually going to do it this time. Just to ensure that we don't get any shorts on there. And, I don't know, maybe I'll do a little bit of cable management right there and then we can bring our wiring harness out and look at that it's almost all the same length perfect okay going by the same numbering scheme the bottom I just pulled this off and the going by my new numbering scheme um, where I am using pin 1 for the lower pin of the device, so pin 1 is ground, pin 2 is, I'm going to call it A, pin 3 is plus 5, and pin 4 is B, we're going to call it. And so we'll label these. You helping? Of course you are. Okay, I think we've got it. We've got plus five um, at and ground at logic level for our Arduino. We've got plus twelve volts coming in from a power supply for the for the motor driver. This is one of those add a fruit um, multimodal driver. Um, hats, daughter boards, whatever, uh, capes, I don't know. I don't know what these guys get called. But anyways, um, 
what this is is a um, either you can control two steppers or four um, four um, DC uh, brushed motors and I've got two of them hooked up here it's got a couple of H bridges some H bridges for controlling motor direction as well um, as the logic for driving um, stepper motors but anyways so that is what we've got hooked up and now we're ready to start looking at a bit of code okay so we're all the way over to the left all the way over to the left and contact okay it looks like it's working it's kind of junky in a way though i'm not sure what that's all about but uh, stops at 3,000 counts. Okay, so um, I've got a test bed um, all set up, ready to do some work. So I think that is a good place to stop for tonight. Uh, I guess thanks for watching and talk to you later. Bye for now.